Before this video starts, please subscribe to my channel because only less than 1% of viewers are subscribed. A special thanks to Suzuki SM Raja for allowing me to film the display units and information is provided down below. Hello there, this is a full in-depth tour review of this all new 2023 Suzuki Espresso 1 litre showing the exterior engine and interior. Here's the key. The exterior colour is granite grey metallic. It has lower black side mouldings with silver trim. Black fabric seats with red pattern in the centre. Three spoke steering wheel made out of rubber. For transmission, the Espresso comes with either 5 speed manual or an AGS. This has an AGS short for automatic gear shift, an automated manual gearbox which uses a hydraulic clutch system inside the mechanics to determine which gear it should be in. This one has rear parking sensors, which has a car handbrake. Now let's take a look at the exterior. Don't forget to release the fuel flap. For the wheels, this has 14 inch door tone for twin spare alloy rims wrapped in MRS VTF. Once it keeps on to R14 Eco Tread tyres. This has halogen reflector headlights. Espresso is named after a coffee of thickness, but that's not the video subject. Instead, it's also the name of a Suzuki car. In India, Suzuki unveiled the Espresso in September 2019, which is a five-door hatchback city car or a micro SUV because of its SUV gear and high ground clearance of 180mm or 18cm. It was to replace the Maruti Suzuki Alto, then Espresso sales started the same month it was unveiled. The Espresso is sold in developing countries across South Asia, Africa and South America. The Espresso is based on Suzuki's hard egg platform used on Suzuki K cars exclusive to Japan and other smaller Suzuki cars. The Suzuki Espresso made its way to Indonesia last August in a sole trim priced at 166 million Indonesian rupees. The Espresso is a replacement for the Kawaman Wagon R in Indonesia, although the Espresso cannot be classed as low-cost green car in Indonesia because it is built from India, not Indonesia. For the design, the Suzuki Espresso is a controversy here, dislike it or like it. The front has squared headlights connected to the thin grille which contains four square chrome pieces. At the bottom, there is silver trim which is used throughout the car to make it stand out. The side is a small car waist up and has large side windows. The rear is the least attractive part. It has compact rear lights and a front brake lamp inside the rear window, a detail I like. One thing which puts me off is the Espresso lacks a rear wiper which makes it look strange. The Espresso inspired from the Maruti Future S concept car previewed in 2018 by the way, the Espresso looks dull in grey. Suzuki Espresso, the segment Mobile Chiacotta, Subaru Pagantian and Maruti Kawaman Wagon R, Young Tela di Potom Bubble Wrapper feature, the Banding Can Spare India, and the Criteria LCJ Sedan Terjewel, and Ampulu Saturibu, and Pot Waters to Lima Unit. Espresso Monkin Tidak Wasaman Debo Khan, the Mobile Controversy, Kana Nia design exterior that Masi Gunakan feature to wear, Miss Uncle Jendela Manual. This is the positive Nia. Espresso support transportasi to the Hana and the Pergi Kedandawi, the Mamiliki criteria LCJ Se Tamasuk, Missin Kuchel Yang Sehat, Consumpsi Bahan Bakar Efficient, dan Radius Porta Pendek. To 
open the bonnet, the bonnet release is there. For engines, the espresso comes with one choice. I'll explain now. Under the bonnet is a one letter inline free 12 valve dual overhead cam naturally aspirated petrol engine. This engine produces 67 horsepower at 5500 rpm and 90 Nm of torque at 3500 rpm. This has a 27 letter fuel tank with a claimed fuel consumption figure of 3.95 letters per 100 km and the Espresso is a front wheel drive car. Above there is glass silver trim. Down below is a thin size door pocket. Manually adjustable mirrors on both sides. To the right of the steering wheel column, there are blank switches. Exposed bit of storage for the driver. I don't know what's that there. Automatic transmission door pedals, bike release, explosive door mats, few flat and boot release. The seat has four manual adjustments, recline and sliding. The headrests are not adjustable, they are fixed. The steering wheel is not adjustable on this one, it is fixed. There are no controls on the steering wheel, it is plain. The right door is the light and indicator controls. The left door is the intermittent wiper controls. This has a fascinating looking instrument cluster with digital speedometer and odometer. There's no worth count on this one. Manual AC controls, temperature on the right, fan speed in the middle, different persons there on the left, including the front defrost, rear defrost, AC, and the recirculation bar. For infotainment, this has a JVC branded touchscreen. I believe this has various media options, and sound is provided, I think, by four speakers. Down below the touchscreen are the two electric front window switches. There's no automatic feature for this window. It has a light switch in the centre. Down below is a 12 volt power outlet. A bit of storage, two cup holders. A small bit of storage shared between the front and rear occupants. Manual dimming rear view mirror, front reading lamp, grip handle which is fixed only for the front passenger side, driver's side sun visor without a vanity mirror. To summarize the Suzuki Espresso's interior, it is fascinating looking, especially the design of the instrument cluster along with the aircon vents. It is purely simple nothing much interesting here the seats are not that comfortable there are hard plastic materials on the dashboard as you expect from a car this class and price point now let's take a look at the rear seats have exactly the same materials as the front doors. Window lever for the manual rear window. It goes all the way down. No door pocket for the rear. Fixed rear headrests. The rear seats do fold down in one piece. For rear seat space, I'm a short person. I've got a good amount of leg room and a good amount of head room. I believe tall people of six footers would be fine back in terms of rear seat space. Leather material on the back of the front seats. No front seat back pockets, no transmission floor. Fixed rear grip handles on both sides.
Now let's take a look at the rear seats. To open the boot there are two ways. Firstly there is a lever inside the in car. The second way you can use the key in the key slot to open the boot up. The boot is of a decent size. Pass yourself. Down below the boot floor is the space saver spare wheel. You can fold down the rear seats if you need extra space. passenger seat have exactly the same adjustments as the driver's side. There is a fire extinguisher down below there. This has two airbags as standard. Exposed bit of storage there. Glove box which is of a decent size with the USB input. 